Welcome to our live coding session for the proposed ESRJC Alumni Portal Student Project. Here, we will be coding live and explaining key parts of the project and how it works, specifically the interactions between the files and tools. If you would like to have the full code, you can find the link to our public GitHub repository in the description. So, let the fun begin. First up, let's start from the entry point of the project, which is the run.py file. Let's build this file and we explain it as we go. First, we import the logging module, which will help us debug and log errors or important system information. Next, we import the create app function from our app package. This function is responsible for initializing our Flask application. We create an instance of our Flask app using the create dot function that we imported. Here, we configure the logging for our application. This setup will help us catch and log any issues that occur. Next, we set the logging level to debug to ensure we catch all messages. For the next line, it creates a logging formatter which specifies the format of the log messages. The details are add time, which adds the time of creation of the log message, level name, which adds the name of severity of the log message, and name, which adds the name of the logger used to log the message, as well as message, which adds the actual log message. For the next line, this line attaches the formatter to the logging handler. The handler is responsible for dispatching the appropriate log messages to the handler's specified destination. The handler in this context is likely defined earlier as a stream handler, which sends logging output to streams such as sys.stdout or sys.stderr. Next, this line adds the previously defined handler to the application's logger. By adding the handler to app.logger, all messages logged via app.logger will use the settings defined in the handler including the output format and the level. For this next line, it uses the log level of the application's logger to debug. Setting the log level to debug means that all messages at this level and more severe levels will be logged. Debug is the lowest level, capturing detailed information for diagnostic purposes. These configurations are crucial for monitoring and debugging the application by providing a clear and structured log output that can be very helpful in understanding the flow of execution and spotting issues. Next, this is the standard boilerplate that checks if this script is the main program and runs the app. We run the app with debugging enabled to help with the development process. This can be removed once the application is deployed and stable. Next, we moved on to the config.py file as it sets up configuration variables that init.py will use to initialize the app. Firstly, we need to import OS to interact with the operating system, such as reading environment variables. We then have to define the config class to hold all the configuration constants for the app. We then have to define the config class to hold all configuration constants for the app. Next. This SQL Alchemy database URI is a configuration key for Flask SQL Alchemy. OS.getenv reads the database URL environment variable. It's not a set, a default URI is used. We get this from the render PostgreSQL when we set up the database in render. Next, 
we add the secret key which is used by Flask to encrypt session cookies. We also use a random key generator if none is provided. This final line which is dot OS dot your random twenty four is the random key generator. Next, database.py should follow since it defines the database object that will be used by init.py, which is then used to configure the SQL Alchemy database settings. Firstly, we import SQL Alchemy, which is an ORM that allows us to interact with databases in an abstracted form. Next, we initialize the SQL Alchemy object. This object will be used in our init.py file to bind it to our Flask app. We then start coding on the init.py configuration file. We have to import necessary modules from Flask and other parts of our application. The SQL Alchemy module has to be imported, which is the one that we created in database.py. Next, we import the main blueprint from our rocks module. Next, we import our conflict class from config.py. We then have to define the create app function which sets up our Flask application. This initializes the Flask app, as can be seen over here. Next, we have to load the configuration settings from a config class. We also have to include the next line. Then we have to load the configuration settings from config class. Next, we initialize the database with app settings. Next, we have to create all the database tables based on the models that we define. Finally, 
we have to register the main blueprint of our app. Next, we will build the models.py app, which will match the schema of database tables in PostgreSQL. First, we import the db object from the database.py module. This object represents our database. Next, we import the datetime module to use date and time functions, necessary for handling date fields in our models. We then have to define the event class, which represents the event table in the database. Each attribute here of the class represents a column in the table. This next line is the unique identifier for each event, auto incrementing each PEM key. This, this title part shows the title of the event, which cannot be empty. What is? Next part, it is the date of the event, which also cannot be empty. For this location part, it shows the location of the event, which can be null. Next, the description of the event is shown in this line, and it can hold longer text and it also can be now. Finally, we will define the profile class, which represents a profile table in the database. We also have to make the unique identifier for each profile, similar to event. We also have to give the name of the person, which cannot be empty. The biographical information about the person also cannot be empty and it can be longer text. We can then continue with the rest of the database tables in a similar fashion. This will include the table alumni, table newsfeed, table collaboration requests. This completes the interactions between the Flask and SQL Alchemy frameworks. In the next video, we will continue with the pages such as homepage and see how the portal interacts between the front end and the back end.